you go to, be it Assembly of God or Church of Christ or Southern Baptist, it's line upon line, here a little, there a little, precept upon precept, until everyone falls into the ditch. And what is the ditch? It's the ditch of traditions of men. There's a format when you go to church. Usually there's singing that precedes the pastor's sermon. There's a crescendo of starting out making few people feel good and better about themselves in their iniquitous doings and abominations. Some of the churches have the pride flag out in front. So they will welcome the sodomites openly, openly practice their perversions without shame and the church welcomes them to come in. Why? Because they worship devils. Come in and we will infuse upon you demons and when you leave you will be worse than you were when you came in. That's what a church is today. Now there are some churches that say that the pride movement is wrong and we are against homosexuality and so forth and so outwardly they appear righteous. The church seems to be intact as far as what they seem to believe except when it comes to the Godhead which is fully in Christ. Jesus is the Almighty God. Jesus is the Everlasting Father. Jesus is the Counselor, the Wonderful Christ, the Holy One. Jesus is Yah. There is none other name given among men whereby we can be saved, and that name is Jesus. It is above all names. And Jesus is called the Word of God. And when Jesus spoke, when he was manifest on the earth as God in the flesh, he irritated the Pharisees, the religious leaders, in such a way that they just, they wanted to kill him. And they eventually did, but that was all in God's plan. Nothing was allowed for men to do anything to Jesus other than what was already planned, and that was that Jesus said himself, for this purpose came I into the world. This purpose was that I should be crucified and then dead and buried and then risen again by my own spirit unto the Father which dwells in me and I in him. Can you wrap your head around that? We can only understand the essence of Christ in our own lives if we are indeed quickened by His Spirit. If we are born again, not of flesh, but of the will of the Father through the blood of Christ, the shed blood of Christ, which forgives us of our sins and cleanses us from all unrighteousness so that we can say, Oh, praise God, I'm clean. I'm clean by the blood of Jesus Christ. 
And when you confess that to the Churchians, they gnash their teeth. They hate you. They hate you. But Jesus said, they hated me, and so they will hate you. But, be of good cheer, my little one, Jesus says, for I have overcome the world. And he sits on the right hand power of God in heaven and puts the heathen in derision as they rage and they try to take away the commandments and the words of Christ that have been through all the world. They tear down the monuments that have the Ten Commandments on them. They take away the Bibles out of the schools. Who does this? Satan and all his minions and all those who serve him. Those who serve sin serve the devil. Those who serve Christ are holy. Even as God is holy. Isn't that beautiful? There is no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. Those who are in Christ do not walk after the flesh. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made us free from the law of sin and death. Isn't that great? That's beautiful. Those words are spirit and they are truth. May God bless you today, keep you in the comfort of His Word. Rejoice in the Lord and pray always. Amen.